Are you struggling with dynamic content and expressions in your Marx Fabric pipelines? Don't worry, since after watching this video, you will be mastering them in no time. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Marx Azure and Fabric related topics. In this video, we are continuing our journey with Marx Fabric data engineering and covering pipeline expressions and functions. This video is also a part of my Marx Fabric data engineering series. A link to the playlist can be found in the description below. But now let's talk about pipeline expressions. That is a very powerful feature in Marx Fabric pipelines that will allow you to build some dynamic logic into your pipelines. Learning to use these pipeline expressions is not difficult, but it would be highly beneficial if you have some programming experience or you are at least comfortable using some basic functions in Excel. First, in this video, I will cover on conceptual level how expressions and functions work in Marx Fabric pipelines. Then we will hop into Fabric and do a demo slash tutorial together to demonstrate how they work in action. But now, let's get started. Let's first cover a few key points about expressions. Firstly, expressions are used for adding dynamic logic to the pipelines in Marx Fabric, and they are particularly used for, for generating file paths, setting parameter values, and customizing outputs. They can be also used to validate data and handle errors dynamically. Expressions in pipelines start with at sign and are most commonly used using the expression builder that we have already used in the previous episode in this series when we covered pipeline parameters parameters and variables. Also, expressions can be added to string values, but then the syntax is a bit different since the expressions have to start with the at sign and then the expression itself has to be wrapped to curly brackets. Functions are a very important part of expressions, and usually expressions consist of one or more functions that add extra logic to the expression. Next, let's cover a few different types of functions that are available when using expressions. First, we have string functions that are meant for manipulating text values. These functions can be used to format, combine, or alter string data in various ways. One good example of a basic string function is the concat function, that is meant for combining text pieces together. Another example of a string function is the replace function, that could be used to replace part of a text value with some other text value. Next, we have date functions that are useful for generating date time related logic to the pipelines. These functions could be used to format, extract, and compute dates and times. One of the most used date functions is the UTC now function that returns the current UTC timestamp as string value. Then we have other date functions like add days that is meant for adding days to a date time value. Third, we have logical functions that allow adding some boolean, meaning true or false logic to the pipeline. Example of a logical functions are your basic logical operators like and, or, equals, greater, and so on. Then we have math functions that allow performing arithmetic calculations and mathematical operations. Some examples of these functions are add, subtract, multiply, round, max, and min functions that are quite self-explanatory what they do if you have done some basic math studies. Next, we have collection functions that are meant for manipulating arrays and objects. These functions are essential for handling complex data structures within pipelines. One example of these functions is the union functions that can combine two arrays together. Another example could be the empty function that returns true if an array or object is empty and false if it's not. Lastly, we have conversion functions that allow converting values from one data type to another. One of the most basic of these functions is the string function that turns values that are given to it as strings. Then we have a bit more complex functions like the XML function that allows converting JSON objects into XML. Next, let's cover a few very useful examples of function usage in pipelines. Let's start with concat function that is one of the string functions and is meant for combining two or more strings together. Syntax for this function is concat, 
then opening bracket and then text values in single quotes separated by commas and then closing bracket. This function requires two or more strings as parameters and then the return value or output of the function is a combined string from those parameter strings. Now let's go through a quick example how this function works. Let's start with three input strings that I want to give to our concat function. Our first is file and our second string is underscore one and then our third string is dot txt. Then we want to give these input string as parameters for our concat function and wrap them in the single quotes and separate by commas. Also, it is good to remember that the expression begins with at sign. I have also done some color coding here that it would be easier to break down the expression into its different parts. After this function executes, we get our return value or output that is just these three strings combined together. Next, let's go through one very commonly used date function, which is the UTC now function. This function returns the current timestamp and it can take one parameter as input, but this parameter is optional and it can be used to format the output timestamp if developer so desires. The default timestamp returned by the function when format is not specified is this ISO standard timestamp. Also good thing to note is that pipelines do not have date or date time data types when talking about expressions and dynamic content so that is why the output has a string data type. Again let's do a quick example to show how this function works. The syntax for this function is very easy if we don't provide any formats as parameters since it is an optional thing to do. When running this function without any formats, we get that timestamp in that default ISO standard format. Now let's do another example, but now let's provide format for the UTC now function. This format is given to the function in string notation, so using single quotes and then representing different components of the time using this notation seen on the screen, where year is represented using four lowercase y letters and month using two capital M letters and so on. After running this function, our output is a timestamp that follows the format that we gave it as parameter. And from my color coding, you can see how these numbers map to the format that I used as an example here. Now let's do one more example where we combine these two functions together. We're going to use concat function as our main function, but with a little twist since our first input string is going to be file underscore, but our second input string is not going to be a regular string. And we are going to use UTC now function with format as our second input parameter. Then our third parameter is going to be .txt. Here we can see how we would create the expression using these two functions together. Also, if it's not obvious, the execution order for these nested functions is always from inside out, meaning that when the function runs, the UTC now resolves first, and then the output of that function is used as a second input parameter for our concat function. Here we can see how does the return value or the output look when we would run this expression. Now let's hop into Fabric and let's do a quick demo slash tutorial together to demonstrate to you how expressions and functions work in action. But before we do that, I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate it. But now let's go to Fabric. First, let's check out our lake house where I have created two new folders, Fabric DE Series 7 source and destination. In our source folder, we have one file named file underscore one dot txt, but our destination folder is still empty. Now we would like to copy this file to our destination folder and add current timestamp to the file name during our copy. Of course, we are going to use the pipeline to do this. Let's hit create and create a new data pipeline and name it accordingly. Then we want to start with a blank canvas and add one activity to our pipeline. This time we are only going to need a copy data activity and we can just select it from the activity list. First, we can name our activity better and let's name it as copy data from LH to LH. 
then we want to configure our source. We want to use workspace data store and the data store type is going to be lake house. Then we can find our lake house from the list of lake houses. Then let's change the root folder to files since we are copying a file from one folder to another. Then we want to browse and find our file that is resting in our source folder. Usually loading up a folder could take a little moment and now we can see our file and we can select it and then click OK. Then we can see that now our file path is pointed to that file. To the other settings we don't need to touch and we can just check that our file format is binary. That should be the default format since we just want to copy this file as a binary block without caring about the contents inside the file. Next, let's configure our destination in quite similar fashion and select the same lake house as our destination and choose files as our root folder. Then we want to browse and find our destination folder. And since our destination folder doesn't have any files, we can just wait it to load up and then we can just click OK without selecting anything that will then add only our folder to our file path. Of course, if you are not lazy like I am, you could just type the folder name to this path. Our file name should be still empty and now we can add some dynamic content there by clicking that field as active and then clicking add dynamic content text that appears under the field. To this field we want to create the expression that will add timestamp to our file name when copying it from our source to our destination. For this we are going to need concat and utc now functions. Let's start by adding our concat function to the expression builder by finding it from our function list under the string functions. Then we need to provide parameters for our concat function. As a first parameter we want to add file underscore one underscore. Our second parameter is going to be the timestamp and for that we are going to use the utc now function that we also covered earlier. It can be found under the date functions. As you probably remember, we could specify a format for our UTC now function, but in this case we are going to go with the default output, so we are not going to give it any formats. Then our last parameter for our concat function, we are going to add .txt. And now the expression should be done and we can click OK. Let's click run and then save and run that will then trigger the run that will take a little while but with youtube magic we can save a little bit of time here and now our run has completed and we can go and check out our lake house destination folder and see that we have a file there that has a timestamp in the name so this pipeline work as planned if we would run this pipeline again we would get a new file to our destination with a different timestamp but this is something that you can try to do by yourself also, you could try to add a parameter to your pipeline and then pass down that parameter value to the destination file name and see how that works. But now you should have an idea how these functions, expressions and dynamic content work in Microsoft Fabric pipelines. If you want to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.